When I started playing guitar, it was difficult to find a teacher because there was not many jazz guitar players in Belgium. Uh, there was Toots Tinnemans who was living in America, and there was René Thomas who was living in, in, uh, in Montreal. And there were some guitar players, but not many. And but I was very lucky because whenever somebody needed a, a cheap, young guitar player, they would always call me. There was much less musicians, but there was a lot of musicians who were not professionals, who were doing good music. Like there was the Jump College in Brussels, it was a big band playing kind of Count Basie, Duke Ellington kind of music. And most of the musicians were not professionals. They had jobs like working one in the insurance company, another one in the publisher music, selling, uh, another one was working at the Sabena, you know, uh, it was a Jump College and it was a very good big band. But they had no idea of being professionals. Jazz musicians, there was of course very few, like Sadi playing vibraphone in Belgium. There was uh, Bobby Jasper who went to the States. Uh, he played with Elvin Jones, he played with Miles Davis Quintet also. And there was Rene Thomas who played with Sonny Rollins in, and he moved to, to, to uh, Canada. But now there's, there's 100 guitar players, you know. There's, uh, when I say 100, it's maybe more. And there was no jazz school at that time too. I started doing these demos at home with uh, my computer, you know, putting rhythm with, with synthesizers and all that, you know. <coughs> And uh, I recorded for about 10 years, about 40. Quick demos, you know, but just playing the melodies, and I really liked that. I was really tempted to make a record uh, based on melody. If you tell jokes in Spanish, how can you have a gig in Belgium? Nobody will understand you, you know. But with music, you don't need words, and, and it's luckily enough, it's quite international. And the reactions I notice, the reactions of people, either in a small club or in a big hall, they are not so different. And you can play in Japan, and then the next day, in, I don't know, in Brazil, and then in Brussels, uh, or, or, or Mozart, uh, let's say Mozart. Um, what is different is open air and not open air sometimes because of the sound. That can make people be different. And also if people drink or not drink, that, that makes difference, you know, in, in a whole. But the difference between Spain and Italy is not very big. The human soul is pretty much the same everywhere. 
whatever culture you are in. Before Placebo existed, we had a band together, Marc Moulin and me, Freddy de Ronde on bass and, uh, and Freddy Rottier on drums. And it was called Casino Railway. But it was not recorded. We recorded two tunes which were an indicatif for a program of Benoit Cassin and also of Marc Moulin called Cap de Nuit. And uh, so we were playing uh, tunes from Marc, tunes from me, tunes from Keith Jarrett. We were you know, it was in the beginning of uh, the end of the 60s. So we were quite influenced by all the music of Miles Davis at that time, when with his electric bands and uh, Zappa. It, it was kind of... Uh, and then Marc Moulin later on made his records placebo and he, and he invited me to play a few, 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 few tunes. And, and Marc has always been a very uh, special guy because he's not only a musician. I don't know if you know that Marc Moulin is a writer too. He, He's a journalist, he's a thinker. Um, he writes about politics a little bit. Uh, not so much politics, but about society and problems of society. And he wrote also some uh, pièces de théâtre, theatre things. It's a big loss, but we don't have Mark, of course. You know? but also, but person, personally, he was a great friend of mine too. And he produced my two first albums, uh, September Man and Guitars which you cannot find anymore. It was in 74 and 75.